Howdy y'all, Lowe's here. Welcome to another episode of Bonsai Yeah. We're here with our friend Brandon Baldoff and Will Baddeley. Hello. We're about to do some amazing carving right now. And you've actually seen this tree. Recall Brandon Baldoff's headquarter tour of the Hawkeye Bonsai. Here. <laughs> That's where you'll see that link right there. So I guess we were going to be in here and we're gonna carve like crazy here in the studio. Bad idea. So we're gonna go take this outside and let's learn how to carve this into a wonderful bonsai masterpiece, shall we? Okay, hello, I'm uh, Will Badley from the UK. Uh, halfway through a tour of the States and I've been kindly asked to carve this uh, olive. It's got some flat cuts on it, as you can see on this area down here. We've got some beautiful dead wood in here. Uh, we'll keep all that and we'll try and emulate on the flat cuts what's the natural stuff that's going on around the tree. We'll probably change the orientation at a later stage. Just tip it over slightly, like that. But we want to deal with the flat cuts and also put some a little bit of movement in it and taper. That's the plan. So, um, and Brandon here will be uh, doing some wiring on this. So we'll, we'll set some primary structure in the tree. Uh, it should turn out quite nicely. Right. So what should we do to get started? Uh, from a carving perspective? I think we'll start by taking off this bit here. Just roll that off. Just to help create some interest. A bit like when you're when you're creating bonsai, you can see a back branch from the front, so you create that sense of depth. If you carve in and uh, uh, carve around, so you're, you're making a, a smaller hole, but inside it's quite a cavern, you create depth and shadow. Yeah. Yeah, so 
that's, that's the idea. If you're, if you're creating holes anywhere in the tree, you've, it's really important that you make uh, good access, excess for the water. You know, so you've, you've got to punch through in somewhere or carve it so the water can uh, flow out. You don't want water sitting in a, a little puddle, otherwise it'll, um, it'll rot the tree out. So it's important to get the water flow out of the tree. What's the bit that you're using? What is that thing? Uh, uh, this is quite an old bit. Um, there's a, a more modern version sold by Kaizen in the UK. Uh, there's a few companies. I think there's a uh, company down in Florida. It's slightly smaller than this, but it's, it, does, it does the same thing. Um, but this is, it looks a vicious tool, but because it's got this shoulder on the back here, it doesn't, the cutting cups, don't go too far, too deep into the tree. You see that? So if if it didn't have that shoulder there, you you'd put this and it would skip skip across the tool, but that shoulder stops it digging in too far. Interesting. So you can be quite gentle with this as well as quite vigorous. You know, you can do little bits like that or you can go really, really deep into it. Very useful. Okay, I'm going to swap out now and put a, a, another tool in that will help smooth it all before I start the refining process. So right now you were just chunking this all out, just getting some yeah, shapes Yeah, just in. removing some wood, get the taper down, a little bit of movement in. So from the front, we've, we've taken a lot out of there and we've taken some off the sides here just to give it that little movement so it kind of comes up goes off that way. And then where it was completely flat, the plane is now broken. So there's lots of variability, uh, undulation, wavering that's going on within this flat cut. Same thing on this on this other side where it was just straight flat. Exactly, you're looking for just subtle movement and compelling motion what beyond just into, the flatness. What goes into something looking natural? Um, experience really. To making something natural or something that exists naturally because this well, like these fissures look not um, made by human you know like as i was saying like oh I sure like it's it's studying dead trees yeah. that's the only way really take photographs just observe um, and try and copy So I'm basically, with the olive being a Mediterranean or a subtropical tree, and here in Texas, we just kicked off the middle of May. So essentially we're at a prime time to do styling and repot work for oleas at large. So this specific technique is called defoliation, and I basically just cut off. But you're cutting off only half. About two thirds of the leaf. But you want to leave, you want to leave the petiole and the leaf intact because there's a little bud right in there. And whenever you do the defoliation process to all of the leaves at once, you'll essentially uh, trigger a release for that secondary back buds to flush out and then those will all extend out. So we're gonna be doing from a styling standpoint is uh, finding the primary lines and then cutting back to a, a compelling shape and then uh, it'll wake up and flush. You're compelling me already? <laughs> I know, we're looking for the movement. <laughs> going to go in and open this the, the middle bit up so it's important to put the, uh, the get the profiles in first if, if you don't if you leave it cylindrical and you put your you punch a big hole in the top uh, you're leaving yourself with very little wood on the sides to then profile afterwards so you profile first and then you then you go in
Um, again, we have to think about how the water is going to escape. So I'm in a bit chunked out of there, but I'm going to go a lot deeper. So I'll probably create a hole somewhere down there with this long bit. Get good access up to up to this the hole. So you've got to drain out. So you're just trying to make channels for this water, not to pull up anywhere on these yeah. flat surfaces. Yeah, or it's, yes. Domes are out of the question. It's hugely important that you consider how the water sits in the tree. You know? Full of dust, but hold on. Yeah, well, that's a perfect little escape route. So yeah. you're just gonna make the bottom of that as deep as that, so that yeah, water so, so, Yeah, so yeah, if the bottom of the hole is there, so then the water will drain. Right. But because this is so uninteresting, this area that I've uh, you know removed a lot of wood on a high spot, I can create a hole and make a feature of that, and turn it into what was an existing branch. Or <coughs> and I like this like. This feature that's already just being built, just right there. By yeah. Carbon. Yeah. Well, what I try and do is you start the amount of wood uh, down down lower, and as it comes up, it tapers off, which allows you to put nice detail in the edge without it looking too thick and clunky. Yeah. So it looks quite delicate when, in fact, it's quite a substantial bit of wood still. to hollow the whole tree I could I could carry on I could pierce another hole drive down and then up and then down in the same hole and then join it up through to here so you create this hollow tree all the way through without making a big shari down the middle you know it's a, a common mistake just to put a big line of dead wood uh, but you kind of lose that, um, you lose the front wood then, so you haven't got that sense of depth. Whereas if you've got whole wood, hole down the tree, then you're preserving the front wood, but creating that depth. detail in and around the hole uh, you you could damage damage the size of the hole so get the back done first before you really go
do is just stagger, stagger up and down so we eliminate that flat cut. Given more time, I would go over this and, and polish it and add a bit more detail. You can see there's nothing on the inside. I would maybe stagger it a little bit more. It's, it's I've noticed it still looks a little bit flat. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, it was a bit of a mission. I went like a crazy man for an yes. hour and a half uh, trying to get it completed and we did it. So. Yeah, I think it's turned out quite well given the time we had. Work in progress. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, and if you like to see any more of Will's work, check out his Facebook. And if you like our content, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit that little bell icon so you're notified. In the meantime, 
be cool, stay hip, and get yourself a hobby. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.